Now this task is open-ended. It can never be finished. But a conscious effort to answer this challenge can change the world. I'm optimistic that we can do this. But I talk to skeptics who claim there is no hope. They say, inequity has been with us since the beginning and will be with us until the end because people just don't care. I completely disagree. I believe we have more caring than we know what to do with. All of us here in this yard, at one time or another, have seen human tragedies that broke our heart. And yet we did nothing, not because we didn't care, but because we didn't know what to do. If we had known how to help, we would have acted. The barrier to change is not too little caring. It is too much complexity. To turn caring into action, we need to see a problem, see a solution, and see the impact. But complexity blocks all three steps. Even with the advent of the internet and 24-hour news, it is still a complex enterprise to get people to truly see the problems. When an airplane crashes, officials immediately call a press conference. They promise to investigate, determine the cause, and prevent similar crashes in the future. But if the officials were brutally honest, they would say, of all the people in the world who died today from preventable causes, one half of one percent were on this plane. We're determined to do everything possible to solve the problem that took the lives of the one half of one percent. The problem is not just the plane crash, but the millions of preventable deaths. We don't read much about these deaths. The media covers what's new, and millions of people dying is nothing new. So it stays in the background, where it's easy to ignore. But even when we do see it or read about it, it's difficult to keep our eye, eyes on the problem. It's difficult to look at suffering if the situation is so complex that we don't know how to help. And so we look away. If we can really see a problem, which is the first step, we come to the second step. Cutting through the complexity to find a solution. Finding solutions is essential if we want to make the most of our caring. If we have clear and proven answers any time an organization or individual asks, how can I help, then we can get action and we can make sure that none of the caring in the world is wasted. The complexity makes it hard to mark a path of action for everyone who cares and makes it hard for their caring to matter. Cutting through complexity to find solutions runs through four predictable stages. Determine a goal, find the highest impact approach, deliver the technology ideal for that approach, and in the meantime, use the best application of technology you already have. Whether it's something sophisticated like a new drug or something simple like a bed net. The AIDS epidemic offers an example. The broad goal, of course, is to end the disease. The highest leverage approach is prevention. The ideal technology would be a vaccine that gives lifelong immunity with a single dose. So governments, drug companies, and foundations are funding vaccine research. But their work is likely to take more than a decade. So in the meantime, we have to work with what we have in hand and the best prevention approach we have now is getting people to avoid risky behavior. Pursuing that goal starts the four-step cycle again. This is the pattern. The crucial thing is to never stop thinking and working and never do what we did with malaria and tuberculosis in the 20th century, which is to surrender to complexity and quit. 
The final step, after seeing the problem and finding an approach, is to measure the impact of the work and to share that success or failure so that others can learn from the efforts. You have to have the statistics, of course. You have to be able to show, for example, that a program is vaccinating million more, millions more children. You have to be able to show, for example, a decline in the number of children dying from the diseases. This is essential not just to improve the program, but also to help draw more investment from business and government. But if you want to inspire people to participate, you have to show more than numbers. You have to convey the human impact of the work so people can feel what saving a life means to the families affected.